Hey there, I'm Charlie Chopshop, and this is Intelligence Check, the tutorial show for Dungeon Masters, though today's episode is for players and Game Masters, so stick around for 5 Roll20 tricks that saved my life. Select the pointer tool, then right click and drag on the map to adjust your view. This is much easier than trying to use the browser window's scroll bars. With the pointer tool selected, left click and hold to make a ping somewhere on the map that other players can see. You can change your player color by clicking the small color square next to your name at the bottom of the map. This will also change your ping color. Dungeon Masters can hold shift while pinging the map to force all players to look there. This is useful for Dungeon Masters who are streaming their games using multiple browser windows. If you have a second monitor, you can set your character sheets to pop up in a separate browser window. Click the settings cog at the top right, scroll down, and then click Use Window Popouts for Characters. If you aren't using the Window Popout feature, you can double click the header of any character sheet, handout, or compendium article to minimize it on your map. You can drag the minimized sheet anywhere you'd like in your browser window. When you need to access it again, you need only double click once more to reopen the sheet. This works very well for dungeon masters who need multiple character sheets open at a time, or players who wish to have a handout or compendium article pulled up during play. If a player character or NPC token is linked to the proper character sheet in your journal tab, you can select the pointer tool, then hold shift while double clicking the token to automatically open the character sheet. You can save yourself the trouble of switching between the ruler tool and pointer tool. Measure a path by dragging your token and clicking spacebar before you drop it in its new location. You can draw more precise movement paths by pressing spacebar multiple times before dropping the token in its new location. Each click of the spacebar drops an anchor, allowing the movement to take on a complex path. You won't see your token follow along this path, but rest assured, other players will. You can select any token with the pointer tool and press spacebar to see its last movement path and the distance it traveled. Player characters can drag and drop any rollable part of their sheet to the macro bar at the bottom of the browser. This will create a macro button that will allow the player to use this roll without opening their character sheet. To use this feature, click the collections tab at the top right and make sure show macro quick bar is checkmarked. Keeping frequently used attacks and abilities in this bar can really speed up combat. You can turn off the player avatars that are cluttering up your map by clicking the settings cog, scrolling down, and setting player avatars to names only. If you're not using Roll20 voice and video, it may also be a good idea to turn off these settings in this menu. You can change your in-game screen name in this window. It's a good idea to set this to your character's first name and then put your out-of-character name in parentheses. Make sure you click Save Name after you're finished editing. If the Game Master has music playing in the Roll20 jukebox and it's getting too loud for you, you can always turn down your master music slider in the settings menu without affecting what other players are hearing. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. And remember, be cool and game on. Chop shop.